This is Jeff Perlman, founder and CEO of Zojo, and today I'm going to take you through what's new in Zojo 2024R2. So we fixed 136 bugs in this release, and we've added 42 new features. I'm going to show you some of the most notable. For Android, we now support TCP socket, and we support our new barcode class. We also support a number of members from the graphics class, line cap, line dash, line dash offset, line join, meter limit, or is that miter limit, <laughs> outline, and shadow brush. So if you're used to using these in the graphics class on other platforms, we now support them for Android. For the web, we've added the ability at runtime for you to add and remove panels for web page panel and web tab panel. These have been supported for some time for the desktop, so now you have them for the web as well and control sets are now supported. Now, if you haven't used control sets on the desktop, they're actually pretty cool. It's a great way to combine uh, like controls into a single group. Uh, I'm gonna give you a demo of that right now. So here I've got a web page. I've got some fields, I've got some labels. Probably not gonna write any code for the labels, and over here in the navigator, I've got all my fields, but I've also got all these labels, label one, two, three, etc. and they're just taking up room. So if you wanna collapse all that down to one control, you can do that easily by just giving them all the same name. I'm just gonna call this labels, and what you'll see is that if I name this the same, the second one, it asks me, hey, do you want to create a, a control set? I go, okay. And now I can just change each of these to that same name and they all become part of a set. So let's do that. And now you can see that in the navigator, instead of having five different labels, I just have a thing called label set. And if I open that up, I can see the members, but they're all neatly tucked away. You can also still code for these. For example, if I wanted to do something when one of these was uh, pressed, if I double click, I can add the event. Let's take the pressed event, for example. And you'll see that you're now past an index, which indicates which label or which control uh, was pressed. So you can share code amongst all of them. And if I simply uh, put some code in here, And I'll put uh, index dot to string. Okay, so these are now all, uh, they all have that same pressed event, same code, and the index is what allows you to tell them apart. So that's the benefit of control sets. And we've improved performance for using large data sources with the web list box. I'm gonna give you an example. So we took a uh, data source that had a million rows, and in R1 and earlier in a web list box, it took 6,000 milliseconds to load that up. That's about six seconds. And in R2, 150 milliseconds. So that's a significant improvement. It's a four times improvement in speed. Now, your mileage may vary, uh, but that was the test we did, and so you can see it's a significant improvement. For string, we've added character count, and this is the number of characters regardless of how many bytes each character consumes. Now this is different from string.length, which is the number of units of storage the string requires, and that's typically bytes, but these can be different. One area where you'll notice they'll be different is with emoji, and there's other multi-byte characters, but we found with emojis, there are some that are one byte, some that are multiple bytes. So if you need to uh, know the number of visually distinct characters, then character count is what you want to use rather than length. And for iOS, the mobile date time picker has two new styles, compact and inline. It's always had wheels, that's the one here on the left. Uh, compact is in the middle, and I've got a little video for that, and you can see when you click on the time, it pops up a little popover, same with the date. Uh, inline shows the entire calendar all at once rather than popping it over, so you now have compact and inline for mobile date time picker. For databases, we've added a new optional signature for add row that returns the unique row ID. You call this by using the new third parameter ID column name. You give it your primary key column, and you call it as a function. You'll get back the row ID that was added for that row. We've also added a new IDE feature called Database Connection. Now, what this does is it basically makes it easier and more visual to set up a database connection rather than writing code. Let me give you a demo of that. 
All right, so to use a database connection, you just add it to your project. I'm going to go to database connection, choose SQLite. I could use Postgres, ODBC, or MySQL, but for this example, I'm going to use SQLite. And it adds a database object to your project just like you're used to, uh, so you can use this to connect. But but you don't have to do it in code anymore. You can now do it automatically. You can see over here in the inspector, it'll connect on launch. And if you expand it, you can see there's a, a different connection for every stage of development. So for example, if you use your own you know, server or SQLite database for developing your application, but you have a different one for alpha, you have a separate one used for beta. Uh, if it's servers, maybe you have a special server database just for beta users. And then when you ship, you have your production uh, server or database. So you can have a different one for each one. So I can just select one and then go and add the database to it. If this was a server, you could set up you know, a different IP address and username and password, all that stuff. And you'll notice if I go back to the object itself, you can set the stage. And I've got it on automatic. That's how it defaults. But you can set it to any stage you want. If you leave it on automatic, then when you change your stage code in build settings, it will automatically uh, connect to the appropriate server. So that's a really handy thing. When you're building a beta, you select beta, it'll automatically connect to your beta server. When you're shipping your final production version, you set it to final, it's going to connect to your final server or database. So uh, so this is going to make the connection. Now let's see it in, in action. I'm going to go over here and add some code to the opening event of this layout. And this works with uh, desktop or web, and I'm just demonstrating it for the web. And I'm going to paste some code so you don't have to watch me type. And this is just doing a quick SQL select. Again, it's just using the database object as it appears in the navigator. And then it's uh, assigning the values from the row set to the various um, controls. So let's hit run and see how that looks. And there it is. There's the first row from the uh, database in the in the web page. So database connection is just an easy way to manage the connection of your database without you having to write a bunch of code to make that work. So that's what's new in Zojo 2024 R2. Thanks for watching.